why a Muslim set a mosque on fire to protest homelessness. Yeah, you heard me right. Okay, let's get into it. Let's clap. Next news. In a startling twist of events, Syed Mir, excuse me, Murakazib, Murakazmi, a 42-year-old homeless man, ignited the flames of a mosque in St. Paul, Minnesota, not out of religious hatred, but as a fiery protest against homelessness. After boldly breaking into the Oromo American Tahoeid Islamic Center, the mosque erupted into smoke, the act captured chillingly on surveillance footage. This disquieting arson marks the sixth attack against a mosque in Minnesota this year alone. Contrary to the initial beliefs that the arson was an anti-Muslim act, it was revealed the Murakazmi himself is a Muslim. He expressed dissatisfaction with the government and the Islamic Center for not adequately assisting homeless individuals. His criminal track record paints a turbulent past in featuring previous charges of arson, burglary, and property damage. Murakazmi, who was on probation during this unsettling incident, now stands charged with arson, burglary, and drug possession. So this is a doozy. And I know Mustafa is in the live chat and he's in Minnesota. So maybe he'd be able to tell us some more information about these events that have been going on. Okay. Shriash is saying the fuck was this dude smoking? The answer is meth. He was smoking crystal. Oh, was he? <laughs> Really? <laughs> he was captured. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. <laughs> we're not we're not promoting that YouTube. You were not yeah. expecting oh. me to actually be able to answer that question. <laughs> the answer is he was smoking ice. <laughs> like, <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <just> said, Fucking <laughs> hell. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my God. Also, here's actually a question. How the F is this a protest against homelessness? Can okay, you explain that? Here's the deal. We have to be a mm. little bit critical when we look at this news and be like, this is less religiously motivated than it is. This is a homeless drug addicted dude who is himself a Muslim that did something wild. Right? Yeah. So let's be clear. That's what happened here. There is a man with a long history of drug abuse and property damage and setting uh houses of worship on fire this is he has a pattern and this is something he did so the oromo american tahuid islamic center um was a mosque that served the ethiopian community and um the the actual space wasn't currently being used for worship and it was more recently being used for like offices and what he did is he was out on probation for another crime and he was only released on bail for like 36 hours before he went and did this other crime and he broke into this mosque and he was like chilling there for a little while and then the surveillance footage camera caught him like setting a room on fire then escaping they used facial recognition to help identify him and they um they captured him and so you know i don't think we can attribute like his actions one to making any sense because you were like how is this a protest against homelessness i don't know don't ask too many questions okay this is this is a method okay and two like don't blame it on islam either just because he's yeah Muslim. this guy is just yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. but i think what's what we can talk about what's interesting is how the there was immediate reaction that this is an anti-muslim thing and lots of outcry and then it was revealed that this dude is himself a muslim he calls himself a muslim and then like suddenly it's just like fell off the radar immediately yeah well there's so, even this tweet from ilhan omar <laughs> that we can read. right yo allah you want to read this yeah okay wait let me um make it bigger for myself okay ilhan omar she said yeah allah this is the fourth arson attack in our community in less than a month. My thoughts are with the Muslim community in St. Paul and the whole Twin Cities metro area. We are stronger than fear. We will not be terrorized. 
I think this dude might have actually set fire to multiple places because, the, like I said, there were many attacks that happened very recently. I can't remember exactly how many this man is responsible for. Obviously, an investigation is ongoing. Um, and then and then someone replied to Ilhan Omar being like, the perpetrator is Muslim. <laughs> you know, this is such a... So, first of all, I'm like I'm looking at Twitter. A lot of people are making fun of the people who are like, "Oh my God!" You know, this w w like people are saying it's uh, white supremacy and this anti-Muslim hate needs to stop and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And other people are now pointing like, actually, you put you put some of them here. Like this person is saying, "This is frightening and uh, and." And unacceptable, everyone should be free to practice their religion without fear, standing with you and the Muslim community against this hate. And somebody is like posting, like people are like making fun of all the people who thought that this is anti-Muslim hate by posting, responding to them like, oh, but but here's the thing. This is not good because now if there is anti-Muslim hate, you know, burning a mosque or something, people are like, well, we don't know. This guy, this could just be one of you guys, right? Like, people are gonna take, <laughs> like, people are going to use this as ammunition every time somebody is now attacking. We had another person that was seemed to be a Muslim that burned another older elderly guy, right? Remember that we had that story that maybe, uh, so now That's people were- right, in London. That were, dude that London, was going people, up to old men, dumping gas on and, them and setting them on fire outside masjids. And that people was, were like, oh my God, anti-Muslim hate. And he was Muslim himself, seemed to be Muslim himself as well, yeah. right? Like he was, so, so, but here's the thing, just so I want to make sure that we're not one of the band, uh, guys that is just like, like, haha, you guys are wrong. Um, we have people on this side as well. Like I remember Yasmin Muhammad, there was an attack of like Yasmin Muhammad coming out on Twitter saying like, oh, we all know who this is. And it ended up not being Muslim. Like it wasn't a Muslim. Like she uh -oh. had, she was. So, uh -oh. so there, we have on the other side, people assuming that an attack was Islamic and it wasn't Islamic, mm -hmm. right? So, so I think everybody from both sides, whether you're anti-Islam, or you are a Muslim, the lesson is, I don't wait <laughs> so you know what the story is actually about, or be skeptical. Be like, yeah. like, just put ifs at the beginning of your sentences. You know what I mean? Just how hard is it? Like, oh my, you could just say like, if this is an anti-Islamic, we don't, we're not sure. If this is one of those things, we will, we will stand strong. Just, just talk with skepticism, whatever, whatever side you're on, like how is, how are people not realizing that this is just the right way to talk about the mm -hmm. news? Just mm -hmm. be, don't be so certain about what's happening yeah. and remind your audience that, yeah, you, we could, we, based on what we know, this could be the case, but we're not sure this is how it's being reported. Mm -hmm. It makes it so much harder for people to just dismiss you next time. If you talk like that, right? Mm -hmm. I don't know. D is saying, wait for the facts. Okay. Exactly. See, this is why D is our lovely news editor. I would like everyone in the live chat to say thank you, D, for <laughs> being such yes. a good editor, because this is exactly what she does. Sometimes we'll cover a news story and she'll be doing the editing and fact checking. And she'll be like, Susanna, actually, we don't know about if this is true yet. So we should make sure to say that in our article or she'll point mm. out an angle and be like, well, it could be this. So make sure to consider that when covering the news. I'm like, thank you, D. This is why, well, we don't pay you the big bucks because you're a volunteer, but this is why you're the best volunteer. <laughs> this, is why, this is why if we could afford it, we should be paying you the big exactly. bucks. Exactly. <laughs> um, the last thing that I wanted to say was that it reminds me of when it was, I think maybe in Texas or one of the Southern states. Do you remember there was that incident that happened last year where there were, I think, at least three or four Muslim men from the South Asian community that were murdered and people were like running around screaming that it was an anti-Muslim thing. And then it turned out that it was that guy that was an Afghan refugee that was going around killing people possibly because it was an anti-Shia thing. Oh, and then suddenly yeah, yeah. that whole case like dropped off the face like Biden was talking about it and then like no one was talking about it. And so I just wanted to mention that because I actually want to say that when people assume that this is an anti-Muslim thing, I think that they are, we should remain skeptical and we should wait for the facts, right? 
But based on context and Occam's razor, if you make that assumption, I'm not going to entirely blame you because it, it, it makes more sense statistically and also in the context of America in particular that that would probably be the most likely explanation for what happened here. It might not be. So, and people have a, an immediate reaction where they're like, I want to protect people in my community. I want to protect minorities in my community. That, that's a noble reaction. So I understand why people immediately have that assumption, right? It, right I'm not going right. to completely condemn it. It's, it's an empathetic response. Um, but we should oh, still like remain skeptical. And then, but the other thing is, okay, when we find out this, this isn't an anti-minority thing, that doesn't mean that we should just not pay attention to it. Cause when it's not an anti-minority thing, suddenly the media has no interest in covering it. So. Mm. Yes, you're right. Also, let me defend Elon Omar. This might have not been an anti-Muslim attack, but anti-Muslim attacks are on the rise. I mean, isn't that the case? Um, I don't know about a, tax but i know I, that statistically um americans have historically are expressing the least amount of anti-muslim bias and attitudes that we have ever had oh so in terms okay, of but attitudes, the attacks are we are very very good attacks i can't remember i know when it comes to against okay, maybe I'm our good jewish brothers and sisters that is definitely rising i don't remember off the top of my head about muslims Okay, I don't know if this for sure. I heard some reports showing that in the U.S. anti-Muslim attacks are on the rise, even though the general attitudes are improving, the attacks are increasing. But I might be wrong about this. I have to double check that. Okay, but whether or not this attack um, was by a Muslim or not, we have to take that seriously. You know, so don't don't let people use this mistake as an excuse not to treat anti-Muslim attacks seriously. It's important they they do get attacked. We and pe everybody, including non-Muslims, should support them. Right. So, you know, yeah, like don't I use said, this as an excuse. There has yeah. been six attacks attacks on mosques in Minnesota this year alone. Right. So, like, there's other right. stuff happening that might actually have a genuine hateful motive. Where, but this. This guy is just um, <laughs> my brain. My, <laughs> my brain just went. This guy is just a Muslim off the rails. I hope he gets help because he seems like he needs help. But, yeah, but yeah, that guy, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. He actually said um, that he was happy that the authorities arrested him because he was going to keep on doing it. Okay, this guy, poor guy, is mentally has mental problems and needs yeah, support. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So we don't even blame that individual. That guy is like, you know, obviously has issues. Yeah. Um, okay. You know, one thing I want to say. I hope. I hope. I sometimes feel like we don't get the same amount of love from the atheist for for the atheist community give you know the, the we don't have like an equivalent channel that is islamic or christian uh or hindu that is this concerned about the safety and well-being of atheists you know oh no i wish <laughs> like we are we are an anti-islamic anti-christianity anti-religion as a whole channel here and we speak about our concern for the well-being of Christians and Muslims and Jews and Hindus, even though we're against the religion. I think more than most Muslim channels. Like, if, if, you, if you look at how much Atheist Republic has talked in defense of Muslim rights, it adds up more than the top Islamic channels, English Islamic channels combined, right? And... We don't have any equivalent of this, like a Muslim channel, this being this dedicated to also being concerned about atheist rights. So I feel like, I sometimes I feel like atheists are so alone <laughs> when it comes to their rights and their well-being and people being concerned about them. I don't know. I hope we move into a world, you know, closer to a world where, you know, atheists' rights and li livelihood and well-being is mm -hmm. a concern for other people as well, not just for other atheists. Yeah. yeah, like I know individual religious people who hold those opinions, but they don't have like a platform where they put that out publicly. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, you're right. Yeah. Anyway, <laughs> Mustafa and <laughs> Sid. <laughs> Mustafa and Sid. The most charitable I think I, I think I heard was from Mohammed Job, where in an ideal Islamic state, we would just be deported. <laughs> yeah. I mean, and that was in support of us not being executed. Yeah, like, yeah, 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 yeah. You I mean, in that sense, it out. is charitable. It was charitable. Yeah. Instead of executing, my manager was like, maybe instead of maybe, and he's like, maybe instead of executing us, they could just deport us. Well, thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, but again, our benevolent masters, thank you. <laughs> yes, yes. But then here's the thing: that is that is until Islam takes over the whole world. Okay. Oh, because exactly. Yes, yeah, so it so the the phase one is for you to have um Islamic caliphate back, and then you will have Darul Islam and Darul Harb. So you have part of the world which is Islamic and part of the world which is not Islamic. And if you are a non-Muslim, you could just leave. They're saying, okay, maybe we don't have to execute them, they could just go to the non-Islamic part. But again, the they, they believe that at some point every every country the entire planet would be Islamic, right? And then there's no way to deport you anymore. And then I guess the only option would be execution. Right. Yeah. And again, because we're not even Ahlul Kitab. So, yeah. What? Cosmic Heathen said, deport us to Allah. <laughs> 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 oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. God. Damn it. Oh, my God. Oh, Erkin is sending us a hundred Turkish currencies. I don't know what that Turkish lira? lira is. That lira, yes. Thank you so much, Erkin. Erkin is saying state borders didn't exist in the era when Islam started. Yes, state borders didn't exist, but it was understood that this is territories existed. Like it wasn't as clear cut as like this is where line where this part is here and that part is you know. Um, ours, you get you know, expelled so it into the hinterlands. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but territories were a thing. Territories like this is our land and that's your land. That was the thing before we had like state borders. Yeah. But anyways, thank you so much for the super chat. But right now we're looking for video editors. Video editors would be working with me. Graphic designers. I think graphic designers would be working with Susie. Um, uh, grant research and writing assistant. They would be working with Susie team coordinator or volunteer applicant ma application managers they would be working with me english to persian translators they would be working with me voiceover narrators would be working with me high profile guest uh, finder and coordinator that would they would be working with me that position live event speaking opportunity hunter that would be working with susanna uh, news cur curator and writer that would be working with susanna Art team manager and payment coordinator. That's a position that we'd be working with Susanna. Financial coordinator and bookkeeper. That's a position that we'd be working with Susanna. A social media manager. That's a position that we'd be working with me. A Drupal web developer. That's another position that we'd be working with Susanna. And lastly, live stream co-host in the background, most likely, unless somebody is really good. Uh, you know, that would be for maybe secular jihadist recording videos, or if they speak Persian for maybe for Persian, uh, the show that would be working with me again, the link to the application for volunteers is in the description and also in the live stream. Um, so if you want to join our team as a volunteer, please consider doing so.